in this part of the experiment, you're going to be seeing uh, a latent print on the left-hand side of the screen here and a 10 print on the right-hand side of the screen. And it's your job to use the information that we provide in the latent to make a decision about whether these two prints come from the same source. Now, this is a simulated latent, so it's got a lot of noise added here. And of course, it's just a very partial print. There's just this tiny feature right here. Um, nonetheless, we would like you to use the information that you do have at your disposal to make one of these eight decisions along the bottom here. Now, I can only guess at this point because there's just one little feature there, but I'm going to say I'm going to be tending an exclusion decision here. So I'm going to click uh, tending exclude. And then once I do that, I get a second feature that's added to that. And now I can look at this as well as to see if it helps me interpret this information here to make a decision about whether I think these two, uh, these two impressions, this one and this one, come from the same source. And again, I'm going to tend to exclude. Um, and then I get a third uh, source here. And based on this, as well as the relationship between these, now I'm beginning to think, I have actually no idea because I'm not a latent print examiner, but um, let's just say that I now am tending identification based on this information. I don't know if that's true or not, I'm not really looking at the images, but let's just say that's the case, so I would click here. And then I get a fourth one. So I'm making uh, eight decisions total, because there'll be eight little features that show up here. That's not to be confused with the eight choices you have here, those are separate things. But ultimately, uh, as I make more and more decisions, I might find that I get uh, that the decision becomes easier and easier. So I might move from my uh, tending or difficult section to moderate or even easy, depending on the quality of the image here. So again, uh, this is sort of a difficult, I don't know, I'm going to go back to exclusion, I don't really know. Now I'm looking at this one and also the relationship between this and the other ones. And um, I don't know, the, the features aren't probably the greatest here, but. I'm going to say uh, it's a difficult exclusion. Um, so I'm going to go on and continue to uh, make a decision here. And once I finish this next one, that will be my last decision for this particular trial, and we'll go on to the next trial. So you'll want to work through these, making decisions all along the way. There will be eight decisions for each latent print comparison. And you might find yourself, as you have more and more features added, uh, moving out into the more moderate or, or easy, even easy exclusions or identifications. Uh, earlier on, you might be more towards the middle here. But we would like you to use the information in this simulated latent print, whatever information you do have at your disposal, to translate that into a decision that also reflects some aspect of the difficulty of the trial. Now, you can take advantage of the fact that the um, dot per inch is the same in the two images, um, just like any latent print examination, and that these have been oriented so that they're more or less upright. Uh, they, there may be slight rotations. Um, so I would not rely on orientation per se, but instead look at the individual features, much like you do in an actual latent print examination. So the data is saved every time the images disappear, uh, and you can see your progress down at the bottom here. You don't have to complete all 72 trials in one sitting. In fact, I would recommend not doing that. Instead, I would recommend that you take breaks. You can come back to this and log in. It will recover your progress all along the way because the data is saved remotely uh, on our server. So that's the basis for this experiment. And I think this is going to tell us something important about how uh, people use the information in latent prints and how the number of features and the number of areas contributes to an overall decision that's made uh, during the process. So I think it's going to tell us something important about how we make uh, latent print identifications, and I really appreciate your help uh, with this experiment.